So every year at my high school, the entire senior class holds a Nerf war that spans about four weeks near the end of the school year. There were about 400 people in my graduating class, so it was a pretty big deal. I'm not sure how popular of a high school tradition this is, but there were a few other schools in the area I knew of who did something similar. My school took it pretty seriously, though. There was a prize pool of $1,000 if your team won, and you even had to sign a freaking waiver, which was surprising because it was all organized by a bunch of high schoolers who really just wanted to shoot each other with Nerf guns. On the surface, the rules seemed pretty simple. You and a few other people registered yourself as a team to the official Nerf War moderators, then you were randomly assigned another team that you would face off against for a week. If you were hit with a nerf dart by the opposing team, you were out. Being eliminated meant you could not shoot other people. The team with the most remaining members by the end of the week wins and moves on to the next week. If both teams had an equal amount of members remaining by Saturday, then the winner would be decided in an organized shootout under the supervision of the moderators on Sunday. As much as I hate to make the comparison, the general concept was pretty much a team battle royale between the people in my class, you know, but in real life. Honestly, it was the OG battle royale before all these video games came out, because this happened four years ago. There were some small intricacies that made the rules a bit more complicated. First of all, school grounds, school-related events, and workplaces were off-limits to the Nerf War. You also could not be shot in your own household unless someone that lives there granted that person entrance. This basically meant no breaking and entering because, you know, that's illegal. Pretty much anywhere else was fair game. This meant, yes, you could be shot simply walking to your car to go to school, and you could be shot while buying milk at the grocery store, and you could be shot while at your soccer practice for your non-school-related club soccer team, which was a very real threat for me at the time. Now that I think about it, you could be in the middle of church or your grandma's funeral or something and some dude with a nerf gun would start pelting you with darts from behind the casket. Other rules. If you hit somebody else's gun with a dart, they were out. This prevented people from using them as shields. Darts could not be thrown. They must be fired from a contraption as a projectile. And unfortunately, there were times when it needed to be clarified that you couldn't do things that were clearly illegal. Like, of course you can't block somebody in their driveway with your car, and no, you may not physically restrain that girl in order to shoot her with a nerf dart. People were really dumb sometimes. And lastly is my favorite rule. There was a way to acquire invincibility. You could become impervious to the nerf dart if you stripped down to nothing but your underwear. You were immune to being shot, but you could also not shoot back. It was a last-ditch measure taken to get yourself out of a tight pinch. Guys had to wear tidy whities as their underwear, colors could vary, and girls had to be wearing a bra and underwear, no sports bras. You also could not be wearing any other clothing, such as socks or shoes. My favorite specification is that if you have a backpack, it must be explicitly carried in the left hand in order for the underwear rule to apply. Not the right hand, that would be a clear violation of the Nerf War regulations. I mean, what kind of idiot would strip down to his underwear and then actually believe he could hold his backpack in his right hand? That would be absolutely ridiculous. I actually had to buy a pair of tidy whities specifically for this rule. But, I'll let you in on a little secret. See, I wasn't about to waste my money on multiple pairs of underwear just for a school Nerf War. So, I wore the same pair every day for almost three weeks. I'm not proud of it. I did wash it every weekend, though, so it's not that bad. Is it? I had heard stories of some other schools that took this rule a step further and made it so that if you stripped naked, you were both impervious to being shot and could shoot back. But this was not implemented at my high school. There was a total of 32 teams that participated in the war. I teamed up with a few friends. We'll call them Justine, Gerald, Jana, and, uh, Jert. These names are in no way similar to the actual names of these people. 
We all grouped up under a less creative name than I would have liked, which was the Justice League. During our first week, we were pitted against the team known as Too Many Cooks. I'd like to give an honorable mention to some of the more creative team names, such as Who Darted and Men With Large Darts. There were also some teams that had to change their names, probably because some school staff member caught wind of what was happening and was like, hey, that's not appropriate. So, it was specified that the STDs stand for the Scrumptious Tea Cake Devourers, the Dick Balls were renamed the Richards Base Balls, and the Ferguson Police Department was changed to the Flock of Pretty Ducklings. Ahem. This wasn't just a game to us. It was our life. For as long as we were in this, it was our top priority above food, sleeping, and school. And this is coming from a bunch of nerds that were in AP classes at the time. So the first step was to get lots of guns. And this is America, so you can just walk into any Walmart and buy handguns, powerful assault rifles, and even handheld rocket launchers. I am absolutely ashamed of the lack of regulation on such dangerous weaponry in this country. Anyways, I ended up with a compact, easily concealable, close-range weapon that I kept on my person at all times, a mid-range, rapid-fire assault rifle with an enormous magazine, and a long-range, extremely accurate sniper rifle that I made out of PVC pipe. This thing was a monster. It was just a blowgun, but it left welts if you hit somebody from any less than 15 yards away. I did end up wrapping it in black electrical tape and drawing on it one day because I was bored. But we didn't stop there. We had to get the most we could out of our guns. You see, normally, Nerf guns have an air compression chamber which lessens the blow of firing a dart so that they aren't super loud. I interpreted this as, Nerf gun weak can be stronger. We disassembled our guns and drilled holes into all the compression chambers so that the darts were fired with as much force as possible. It may have sounded like we were firing nail guns, but they also worked a lot better than before. In order to have an upper hand over our opponents, we had to find out everything we could about their lives. Where they lived, where they worked, where their relatives lived, what color car they drove, their shoe preference on windy days, everything. This basically meant we did a ton of online stalking. We were scrolling down five years on their Facebook timelines, looking up their relatives' addresses on white pages, calling their Aunt Susan to ask how the kids are doing, all that kind of stuff. We were like CIA hackermans. You know how in crime shows like Criminal Minds, they always have that computer nerd that finds information on the suspect? The FBI would be like, we need to know at what age the suspect lost the bottom right middle incisor as a child. And then the computer nerd would be like, okay, just give me a second while I hack his memories. And then a few minutes later, they'd call back and say, they lost that tooth when they were eight years old. And then we'd intercept the call and say, actually, it was one month, five days, and 37 minutes after they turned nine years old, because we were just that good at finding information. The first round went by relatively smoothly. It was actually kind of boring. Thanks to the cautious and vigilant lifestyle we had all adopted, none of us were shot, and we managed to eliminate two of their members. They were weak, and therefore had to be disposed of. In the second week, things got much more interesting. We would be facing off against the recently amended Flock of Pretty Ducklings. And you'll have to find out how that went next time. Yeah. This whole story is really long, so I'll have to split it up into multiple parts. Sorry about that. Think of it as a TV series where new episodes come out, like, once a month. I'm sorry. Anyway, thanks, bye.